Battle for the Planet of the Apes is a 1973 science fiction film directed by J. Lee Thompson. It is the fifth and final entry in the original Planet of the Apes series, produced by Arthur P. Jacobs, following Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. It stars Roddy McDowell, Claude Akins, Natalie Trundy, Severn Darden, Lou Ayres, Paul Williams, and John Huston. The two sequels in the 2010s reboot series, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes, have a similar premise to battle, but they are not officially remakes. Topic. Plot Told as a flashback to the early 21st century, with a wraparound sequence narrated by the orangutan lawgiver in North America 2670 AD. This sequel follows the ape leader Caesar over ten years after a global nuclear war has destroyed civilization. Living with his wife Lisa and their son Cornelius, Caesar creates a new society while trying to cultivate peace between the apes and remaining humans. Caesar is opposed by a gorilla named Aldo, who wants to imprison the humans who freely roam Ape City while doing menial labor. After defusing followers of Aldo who attacked a human teacher for saying, No! To apes, Caesar ponders if his own parents could have taught him how to make things better. MacDonald, Caesar's human assistant and younger brother of MacDonald from Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, reveals to Caesar that his brother told him of archived footage of Cornelius and Zira within the underground, now radioactive ruins of what's known as the Forbidden City from the last film. Caesar travels with MacDonald and his orangutan advisor Virgil to the Forbidden City to find the archives. It is revealed that mutated and radiation-scarred humans are living within the city, under the command of Governor Culp, the man who once captured Caesar. Caesar and his party view the recordings of his parents, learning about the future and Earth's eventual destruction before they are forced to flee when Culp's soldiers attempt to kill them. Fearing the mutant humans may attack Ape City, Caesar reports his discoveries. When Caesar calls MacDonald and a select group of humans to the meeting, Aldo leads the gorillas away. Culp's scouts have found Ape City. Culp believes Caesar is planning to finish off all mutant humans. Culp stubbornly declares war on Ape City despite his assistant, Mendez, attempting to have him see reason. Aldo plots a coup d'état in order for the guerrillas to take control. Cornelius happens to overhear from a nearby tree and is critically wounded when Aldo spots him and hacks the tree branch he is on. The next day, after a guerrilla scouting pair are attacked by Culp's men, Aldo takes advantage of a grieving Caesar's absence to have all humans corralled while looting the armory. Cornelius eventually dies from his wounds, leaving a devastated Caesar with a revelation that Cornelius was not hurt by humans. When Culp's ragtag force launches their attack, Caesar orders the defenders to fall back. Finding Caesar lying among dozens of fallen apes, Culp expresses his intention to personally kill him. The apes, however, are feigning death, who then launch a counterattack that captures most of the mutant humans. Culp and his remaining forces escape, only to be slaughtered by Aldo's troops once out in the open. Aldo confronts Caesar about releasing the corralled local humans and orders the guerrillas to kill them. When Caesar shields the humans and Aldo threatens him, Virgil having learned the truth from MacDonald reveals Aldo's role in Cornelius' death and that he broke their community's most sacred law, Ape shall never kill ape. An infuriated Caesar pursues Aldo up a large tree, their confrontation resulting in Aldo falling to his death. 
with Caesar realizing that apes are no different from their former human slave owners, he agrees to McDonald's request for humans to be treated as equals, coexisting in a new society. They store their guns in the armory, Caesar and Virgil reluctantly explain to the armory's overseer, an orangutan named Mandemas, that they will still need their weapons for future conflicts and can only wait for the day when they will no longer need them. The scene returns to the lawgiver, saying it has now been over 600 years since Caesar's death. His audience is revealed to be a group of young humans and apes, the lawgiver noting that their society still waits for a day when their world will no longer need weapons, while they wait with hope. A close-up of a statue of Caesar shows a single tear falling from one eye. Topic. Cast Topic. Production Topic. Development Initially, writer Paul Dane who had provided the script for every previous sequel was hired to provide a story treatment for the fifth film in the series. Dane withdrew from the project prior to completing the screenplay due to health reasons. Screenwriters John William Corrington and Joyce Hooper Corrington were brought in after the success of their film The Omega Man, although prior to that neither one of them had written any science fiction films. Joyce Carrington later admitted they had never seen any of the Apes films prior to being hired to write the script for battle. Dane was unavailable for the initial rewrites but was hired to come in and do a final polish on the script making minor changes to the script that the Corringtons had written. Dane was given a story credit despite an appeal to the Writers Guild of America for shared credit on the screenplay. Dane claimed to have rewritten 90% of the dialogue and he altered the ending. The original script by the Corringtons ended on a playground with ape and human children fighting. Dane chose to go with a close-up of a statue of Caesar with a tear falling from its eye which Joyce Corrington characterized as Stupid. It turned our stomachs when we saw it. The Writers Guild of America ruled in favor of the Corringtons for sole screenplay credit. Topic. Filming Principal photography took place on the Fox Movie Ranch for an estimated budget of $1.7 million. Heading into filming, director J. Lee Thompson was unhappy with both the script and the scope of the production, which he felt could have used a bigger budget to assist in the portrayal of the battle. Thompson had agreed to direct without a script in place and regretted that Paul Dane couldn't have been on the project throughout the writing process. Battle for the Planet of the Apes was the second to last film produced by Arthur P. Jacobs. He died June 27, 1973, at age 51, less than two weeks after its release. Topic. Extended cut The syndicated television version adds a few scenes cut from the theatrical release. One scene takes place after Aldo chases teacher Abe, where McDonald reminds him why humans should not say no to an ape. Another scene towards the end of the film shows the beginnings of the House of Mendez cult, as the humans in the city are about to fire off the Doomsday Bomb as seen in Beneath the Planet of the Apes, but decide not to, as it would threaten the world. In Beneath, one can see many signs of Mendez in the Forbidden Zone, a hymnal on the pipe organ reading, Mendez II, 
Busts of past leaders of the mutant society, such as Mendez 14, and the mutant leader in Beneath is also named Mendez. It is clear that Governor Mendez is a different leader than his predecessors, Breck and Kolp, since he is more sympathetic to the apes, as long as they do not invade their territory. In 2006, the Planet of the Apes movies were re released separately and in a new box set. This version was earlier released as a bootleg. Listed are the additional scenes. Near the end of the opening credits, the score continues to its original ending for 25 seconds, with extra footage of General Aldo approaching Ape City on his horse. The chase of the teacher of the apes is longer by 20 seconds. The mutant chief is walking around in his HQ, and has more dialogue. The entry into the ruins of the Forbidden City of the Ape Scout Party with Caesar is 40 seconds longer, with more dialogue. The escape from the Forbidden City shows more footage and dialogue involving the apes. The scene where Cornelius is shot by a human boy begins slightly earlier, making it clear that the shooting is a game which makes more sense since no mutant party had yet even approached the ape city. Deleted scene, in this edited scene, Governor Culp tells his lieutenant to fire an atomic missile on ape city when he gives the signal. The mutant assault is 45 seconds longer. In this sequence, there were three more smaller cuts that reduced the battle scene by 40 additional seconds, and originally there was no musical score. The scene where Governor Culp calls, Sergeant York, is missing. There are additional shots and dialogue before the mutants lay down the smoke screen. 355 more seconds of the battle were cut. The scene where Aldo kills Governor Culp and his followers in the school bus has been restored. The fight between Aldo and Caesar is longer. Deleted scene, Mendez has become the new governor and talks the mutant lieutenant out of firing the atomic missile. As they argue, they discover it is the Alpha Omega bomb from beneath the planet of the apes. Topic. Reception Battle for the Planet of the Apes grossed a domestic total of $8.8 .8 million, making it the lowest grossing film in the series. The film received mixed to negative reviews from critics. The film holds a 38% rotten rating on the review aggregate website Rotten Tomatoes, based on 24 critical reviews. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times gave the film two stars out of four, stating, Battle looks like the last gasp of a dying series, a movie made simply to wring the dollars out of any remaining ape fans. Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune awarded one star out of four and wrote, The fifth and last in the successful Apes series is the worst of the lot, a bloody bore. Variety noted, This is the fifth and last feature film of the Apes series, and the fact shows too obviously in the Arthur P. Jacobs production, which is routine programmer material for fast playoff. J. Lee Thompson's perfunctory direction both reflects and sets the sluggish tone pervading the 86-minute film. Vincent Canby of The New York Times opined that director J. Lee Thompson will not win any awards for battle, but the film's simplicity diffuses criticism. The chimpanzee and orangutan makeup remains remarkable, and the lines are occasionally bright and funny. There are far worse ways of wasting time. Tom Shales of the Washington Post wrote that the film ends it all with more of a thud than a bang. 
prolonging the concept but, again, failing to extend the idea. Kevin Thomas of the Los Angeles Times wrote in a positive review that although the film is launched from a more thinly contrived premise than any of its predecessors it becomes just as involving as they were, thanks to the strong appeal of the series' allegorical underpinnings and to the adroit direction of J. Lee Thompson, who stages several spectacular rather than gory battle scenes with the same finesse he displays in the film's more intimate moments. David McGillivray wrote that almost every line of the Corrington's thin script attests the strain of having to find anything new for the apes to say or do. <laughs> <laughs> Legacy In the 2012 film Argo, based on the 1980, Canadian caper, Rescue from Iran of U.S. diplomats hiding at the Canadian ambassador's residence, Tony Mendez gets the idea for the fictitious Argo cover story from watching Battle for the Planet of the Apes on television. This was a nod to the role of Planet of the Apes makeup artist John Chambers in the Canadian caper. Topic. See also List of American films of 1973